All of us have two lives, the life we live and the life we are capable of living. You have no doubt heard the saying, knowledge is power. I disagree. Knowledge is only powerful if you use it, if you act on it. How many times have you known not to eat that pizza, but done it anyway? How many times have you watched TV instead of going to the gym? How many times have you fallen off your plan and known you should start again, but ignored weight loss habits for months anyway? We don't have a knowledge problem, we have an execution problem. So it is no surprise that after seven years of struggling to lose weight, it was only when I created my badass body boss system that I got to my goal in one year flat. And I've stayed there for more than eight years now. The system has three steps, B, T, S. Smooth like butter. No, 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 not the band. B for base, which consists of two parts. The first is start. And if you think your starting point is your current weight, sorry, that's not enough. Here's my before photo, my first after photo at my goal weight, and after a year of work, my final after photo at that same weight. Did I need to go through the skinny fat phase? Absolutely not. I messed up. Why? Because our weight equals not just fat, but also lean mass. This causes three main body trends. Your body follows trend one if you tend to lose weight and inches equally. This means your body loses fat and lean mass equally, so you tend to see moderate progress. Your body follows trend two if you tend to lose more inches than weight. This body type holds on to water and glycogen even while you lose fat. You may conclude that you're not making progress when you actually are. If you stick to your plan despite not seeing weight loss for weeks, eventually your weight could drop. If this happens, it's because your body has finally let go of the water it was holding onto, causing a big drop in weight, aptly called the whoosh effect. But how do you know during those stuck weeks if it's a whoosh effect in waiting or if you're actually stuck? This is where knowing your fat versus lean mass is critical. I'll explain how to do this in a bit. But first, let's finish covering the third trend. This is you if your body loses more weight than inches. When you can stick to your plan, you feel like you make fast progress, but actually you're shedding more lean mass than fat and are at the highest risk of ending up skinny fat. And no matter which trend you fall into, you can end up skinny fat if your nutrition targets are not correct. I'll cover how to set your nutrition targets correctly in the second part of base. But for now, realize the importance of tracking not just weight, but also fat versus lean mass. The simplest way to do this is to use the body fat tracker linked in the description below to break down your weight into fat versus lean mass. And then at every check-in, the tracker will tell you when you're losing more lean mass than fat and what to do. I also recommend tracking this in a sheet. I'll explain why in a bit. Together, this is your start. And now onto the second part of preventing the skinny fat fate, having a clear goal. We do this by setting nutrition targets. Before I tell you what it is, you need to understand how to not set your nutrition targets so you don't keep falling for fads like I did. Put your detective hat on to spot what I did wrong. I started with the extreme GM diet, which is a juicing diet. I lasted three days and then ate everything in sight for the next week. I then switched to paleo where I wasn't as hungry and successfully lost weight but not being able to eat with my family gnawed at me until by Christmas, I was off paleo. I jumped next to intermittent fasting, wisely skipping lunch so I could still eat dinners with my family and friends. But then my weight loss stalled and everyone online said to expand my fasting window. But then that would again cause me to stop eating with my family. Each of these diets have tons of success stories. So why didn't they work for me? Because notice how each time I started a new diet, I decided to change my whole life to fit the diet instead of the diet fitting me. But how do you do this when each of these diets come with their own special list of rules? If you're like me, you're probably afraid to change any of their rules because what if the diet doesn't work then? After a medical scare and three years of wading through textbooks, research papers, and trial and errors, I can sort out all the conflicting information out there for you. There are six main camps of how weight loss works, ranging from least structured to most structured. On the least structured side, we have all rules are bad and we should listen to our bodies on when to eat and how much to eat. Agreed, but the problem is if you're like me and have spent a lot of your life eating past when you're hungry or to relieve stress, boredom, or as a form of connection instead of pure hunger, your body's hunger signals are out of whack. It's like using a miscalibrated compass to find your way. You will be led astray. Instead, you need clear boundaries to start 
which then over time recalibrate your hunger signals. So let's move one up the spectrum to more boundaries. Intermittent fasting. It's based on the premise that our bodies aren't meant to be constantly fed. See our Stone Age ancestors. And so we should fast to return our body to optimal conditions between meals. I can't speak to the other health benefits, but for weight loss specifically, you'll find that most successful weight loss intermittent fasters had to finally adopt very long fasting windows. The reason is as you get leaner, your body needs less to maintain itself, and thus you need to eat lesser and lesser. I don't know about you, but I certainly cannot sustain skipping multiple meals a day or fasting multiple days. Let's move one more up the spectrum to calorie counting, the point of which is to eat less than how much you burn maintaining your current size, that is, create a calorie deficit. Unlike intermittent fasting's all or nothing approach, you can portion your foods per meal to be in a calorie deficit, thus this being more sustainable, at least on paper. But we all know that after a thousand calories of fries, we get hungry a lot sooner than a thousand and calories of steak, so the nutrition of the food we choose matters. This is what macro counting fulfills with its structure of splitting calories into its components of carbs, protein, fat, and alcohol. But if you're like me, meeting one target, calories, was hard, and now I need to thread three needles to win? This dilemma is solved by diets like keto, paleo, weight watchers, and others, where you have a list of foods to eat more of and another to eat less of. The lists are created to cause you to fall into optimum macro ratios as a byproduct, which then means you get hungry less often and usually can't eat any junk or sweets anyway due to them being on the eat less list so you end up indirectly being in a calorie deficit. But what about micronutrients? We know they're critical for a high metabolism. Moving one more up the spectrum, we have holistic interventions, which include supplements and lifestyle interventions in addition to lists of foods to eat more or less of. Any menopause, PCOS, or hormone-specific weight loss program falls into this category. The problem is this is a huge leap from your current lifestyle and is again trying to fit yourself into the plan instead of the plan fitting you. It has the least flexibility, but then the end with the most flexibility is like wandering the forest with no map. Having coached over 900 people to lose weight forever, what I have seen work best is the sweet spot between structure and flexibility, a mix of calories and macros. If you're going, oh, I hate tracking, I 100% feel you. I often felt my calorie target was too low, leaving me hungry many days. I could also never be sure if the calories and macros I picked were accurate, which made all of the tracking feel pointless. It also felt tedious to log my food every time I had a bite or sip of anything. And yet, we also know from studies that even dietitians underestimate by 250 calories on average, and for non dietitians it blows up to 450 calories off. Without tracking, it's like flying a plane without sensors. How do we solve this dilemma? by fixing how we approach tracking. First, trends over accuracy. Even nutrition labels are inaccurate by up to 20%. High accuracy doesn't matter because as long as you consistently pick the same calories for each food, you can correlate with your outcomes if your calorie target is right. Psst. Inside my Badass Body Boss program, we offer a done-for-you food tracker where we take care of converting food logs and photos into nutrition information for you. Tediousness near zero. If this would be a game changer for you, join the waitlist linked in the description below so I can tell if it's worth offering this outside our program. All right, second, remember to every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. So the harder you push your body, the more it pushes back by slowing your metabolism and revving up your hunger and cravings. The key to success is to find a sweet spot where you lose weight without your body pushing back hard. Alarmingly, most food tracking apps put you on a 30% deficit. So if you have ever been starving while following these apps, this is why. What we have found after helping 900 plus clients is that the sweet spot is a mild 11 to 15% calorie deficit. You can use the calculator linked in the description below to calculate what this calorie target is for you. Third, add a two liter daily water target if you're a woman, three liters if you're a man. Dehydration manifests as hunger instead of thirst in its early stages. Nip it in the bud. Next two are optional steps. First optional step, if you're someone who eats out or eats big meals certain days of the week, use the calculator linked in the description to set calorie cycling targets, meaning set a higher calorie target on days you eat out and a lower calorie target on days you eat in. What matters is you're on average below your calorie target, not what you total each day. Lastly, if you're someone who gets hungry sooner than three to four hours since eating or have a lot of cravings, then add a greater than 17% protein target. 
The calculator linked in the description will also tell you how many grams of protein per day that totals to for you. And then track these targets in an action sections of the sheet you created earlier. Altogether, this forms your goal. But then what's your plan to get from start to goal? Everyone has a plan and they will get punched in the face. True, but life throws punches at everyone. And yet some succeed while others don't. The most common punches or triggers are surprises like my manager took the team to lunch, old habits like I had terrible late night cravings, temptations like I went out and couldn't resist the chips and guac, justifications like I exercise a lot so I deserve to eat more. If you're like me, my focus after each slip was to get back on track, sometimes by swinging in the complete opposite direction. Like if I overate, then I'd overexercise and have my meal portions, which would then make me even more susceptible to all these triggers, and the pendulum would swing back and forth, back and forth, until I burn out. I made two mistakes. The first was to compensate for an off-track day. No matter how badly I wrecked my plan, I should have just gotten back to exactly the same targets as before to avoid being more susceptible to these triggers. My second mistake was I solely focused on getting back on track. I never paused to reflect why exactly I fell into these traps in the first place, and what will my plan be in the future to recover from these punches quickly. Because as sure as the sun rises, they will happen again. Turns out five minutes a day is all it takes to create a plan on how to evade future punches. First, add a recurring time block for reflection in the late afternoon or evening daily. Second, create a new tab in your sheet called behavior. Only if you went over your calorie target, fill in the date, the trigger that set off the chain reaction to overeating, and the verbatim dialogue in your mind before you started eating. Then fill in the verbatim dialogue in your mind during and after eating. Third, put into the plan column what is the one thing you will do to redirect yourself away from the slippery behavior chain. Fourth, don't change anything because remember what matters is if you meet your average weekly calorie target, not what happened any one day. Daily tracking is only to capture what happened accurately so that in case you're off track on a weekly level, any tweaks you make would be based on what actually happened. But how do you adjust your strategy if you're off track on a weekly level? I used to only make adjustments when my weight loss slowed or got stuck. So they were always about doing more, exercise more, or eat lesser. But isn't getting hungry a lot also a reason to adjust calories? What if you're losing weight, but it's mainly lean mass? What if you ate out the day before your weigh in and your weight's gone up? Should you even make an adjustment? If you're like me, you have been ignoring listening to your body. We act as if we're calories in, calories out machines, unaffected by hunger, craving, stress, and the environment around us. Instead, there's a third category that goes into your sheet called reactions. If your outcomes, actions, and reactions are not progressing in lockstep with each other, your weight loss is doomed. There are four steps to your weekly adjustment. Step one, check in using the body fat tracker that you used in the base stage. Copy over your numbers into the outcome section of your sheet. Step two, enter your weekly calorie average, and if you're tracking protein, protein average in the action section of the sheet. Step three, add a reactions category to your sheet and rate yourself on hunger and cravings, enter hours you slept, track where you're at in your period, and yes, no to whether the day before your check-in you ate out or had a big meal. Step four, add a decision section where you copy the suggestion from the body fat tracker, and if you need to make any adjustments, write down the one change to make. There's a universal principle called the Pareto principle, which states that 20% of your efforts produce 80% of your results. This has been found to be true for everything from agriculture to waste management. For weight loss, the 20% tends to map to just one change. But rewind, do you even need to make an adjustment? If the body fat tracker says to keep going, your hunger and cravings are good, and meeting your nutrition target doesn't feel hard, then you don't need to make any changes. Resist the temptation to add on new healthy habits or to make things go faster. Weight loss isn't your job. You should be thinking, this is too easy, I could do more, and then not to do more. For any other body fat tracker result, I don't have your data in front of me to give personalized advice, but here are the eight most common adjustments. I met targets and did not lose fat. For next one week only, I will measure and weigh all of my food and drinks. And if after that I still don't lose fat, I will look at what's different from reactions and actions from past check-ins where I did lose fat, so I can return to what worked before. I am meeting targets and losing a sustainable 1% body weight per week. And yet, I'm really hungry within 2-3 to three hours of my last meal. So I'll up my protein target by 10 grams. My waist and have changed in opposite directions, so I'm likely bloated. I should ignore this week's data. My fat went up and lean mass went down. My body is stressed. I need to dial up the self-care. 
take it easier at work and home, sleep more, go for easy walks instead of full workouts, and maybe even up to maintenance calories for this week. My after dinner cravings are off the charts. So I will look through the behavior tab of this past week, pick one idea from plan and add it to my calendar to do for this next week. Every time my period is coming up, I get one-off wonky results. So I should just ignore that week. I lost more than 1% body weight in the last two weeks. I'll up my calorie target by 100 for this next week. I lost no fat despite nailing my nutrition targets, but I also ate out yesterday. So this is probably a one-off wonky result. I should ignore this week's data. And then you're back at the trigger stage for the next seven days. The BTS system works because it's built on the scientific method, the core principle that drives progress in all science and technology fields. But it can take a lot of trial and error to know how to do each stage right. So you have two options. One, if you want me to help you shortcut through all the trial and error and be losing fat sustainably as fast as possible, then check out the free sneak peek into my Badass Body Boss program linked in the description and comments below. Or if you want to DIY it, then you don't want to ignore this video where I go into 10 times more detail into each stage. This one video will save you at least eight weeks of trial and error. So you don't want to miss the complete step-by-step -step breakdown here. And always remember, you can do it.